Good afternoon. I'd like to call the order, call the order of the meeting of the School Bond Advisory Board on September the 3rd, 2019. Um, first order of business is to approve the minutes of the August 14th meeting of the School Bond Advisory Board special meeting. I recognize a motion to that effect. It's been moved, it's moved and seconded. We'll vote. Approved. Who we met? We got too many green lights. Do we or not? No, we're okay. <clears throat> Next item is to receive the independent school district number 89, 2007 and 2016 school bond issue revenue and expenditure reports. Mr. Chairman, you have in your in packet the uh, revenue and expenditure reports in their usual form. Try to answer any questions that you might have on those. Are there any questions? Seeing none, we'll vote. Motion. Somebody's got to give us a motion. I'm motion. sorry. Motion. Motion. Is there a second? Yes. Motion, second. We'll vote. Approved. This next item which recommend the approval of the final plan and specifications of the I-89-2007 school bond issue project S7-001B gymnasium at Wilson Elementary School. And there's a presentation. Mr. Todd. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, this is part of the 2007 bond issue where we were doing the MAPS office was overseeing the gymnasiums for several schools. Today we're looking at Wilson Elementary and Jack Joyner from JHBR is here to uh, tell you about the final plans. Okay, thank you, Mr. Todd. Um, as you said, my name is Jack Joyner with JHBR Architecture, seeking approval for the final plans for Wilson Elementary Gymnasium. Uh, if we take a quick look at the site plan, see the existing school is in the purple color, uh, the new gymnasium being the lighter teal color. Um, you can see we're situated between Northwest 22nd and Dewey Avenue. Uh, the kind of the Pinkish color will be new paved areas. We've got a green area. It will be a covered canopy connecting the new gymnasium, which will also be a storm shelter to the existing uh, school. You can also see on the site plan we have a relocated playground equipment in the project. Kind of a blown up plan. Once again, you see the existing building in the purple. Uh, the new gymnasium safe room will contain a gymnasium play area. The orange spaces are support spaces, an office, multi-purpose room, storage, electrical, IT, janitor's closet, and will also provide boys' and girls' restrooms. Um, you see the covered canopy in the green area uh, to provide shelter to the students coming from the existing building. We do have one alternate, kind of in the yellow. It'll be a dumpster enclosure with modifications to the existing drive included in the project. Uh, as far as the exterior, this was in the Historic Preservation District, so we had to get approval uh, from HP to move forward. So you can see we've mimicked some of the uh, elements from the existing school as far as the windows, the brick patterns, um, the volume of the space. This is kind of looking for southwest. You see the covered canopy with the word gymnasium at the main entry. The shorter portion is the support spaces. The taller space is the open playroom area. Uh, this is looking northeast. Once again, the existing school in the background and the foreground is our uh, new gymnasium safe room and the new relocated playground equipment to the right. This is an elevation looking north. This is the support space, uh, the shorter volume, and then once again you see the covered canopy. Interior shot, this is the Wilson Wolves, school colors, blue and gold. So we work with the staff uh, to develop this interior concept. Um, you can also see the yellow, the acoustical panels. We've paid most close attention to the acoustical needs of the space. This is a shot of the color board. You can see the materials, paint colors, flooring, uh, wall panels, metal panels, gym flooring, and tile. As far as the budget goes, the original program budget, $1,937,375. Um, we're estimating that the base bid plus our alternate will be $2,000,000. $321,820. You see that's an overage of $384,445. Uh, 
The reason that is the items listed below. Um, we do have FEMA rated tornado windows that are included in the base bid that amounts to a little over $146,000. We have brick and cast stone detailing uh, to comply with the HP requirements. So this is on top of what we traditionally do at the gymnasiums. So that accounts for an additional over $133,000. The relocated playground, $13,000. And then you see the alternate there for the new dumpster enclosure, fencing, and masonry pilasters. That's a $90,000 add. So that gives us our total overage for the project. As far as the schedule, um, we're seeking approval for the final Designed today to go out to bid September 19th. We'll receive bids on October 8th. And then construction will be November of 19 and last a full year until November of 2020. And that's it. If you have any questions. Are there any questions? I continue expressing my disappointment that these gyms, none of them have uh, space for seating. And the use of multipurpose uh, space for these schools are, are needed. So. I know the answer. Okay. I just have a quick question. If the FEMA-related tornado windows are included in the base bid, then why is it down here as an alternate? Yeah, those aren't really add alternates. The only one that is an alternate would be the dumpster enclosure. Really, this is just a running list of why we are over budget at this okay. point. Did we put tornado windows in all the rest of the gyms that we built? I do not believe so. Is there a reason why we're just doing it for this school? I'll let Gary answer that. I believe that lots of times we came back with some change orders to, to do those. We didn't begin doing that, but Gary, you right. want to We do some, it? not all gyms. Every set of gyms for different architectural firms. So some elected to and some elected not. This one here, because of the HP, we had to add additional windows onto it. So there's always been some in, in a majority of them, but not all of them. Some, some of that is because of architectural styling. The, the uh, parents and, and patrons of Wilson wanted it to match the rest of the school. They needed those windows in, and in order to meet the FEMA rating, we had to put the protection in there. We did an add-on. I've got one question. Okay. Uh, we did an add-on as well as an um, alternative. And the dumpster enclosure for $90,000, do you remember what the last one was that we approved up here? We had the same thing, but it, I, don't, I remember being expensive, but I don't understand $90,000. I, I don't think that board. design has changed any, and it's not just the enclosure. It's everything going along with it. It's the approach, the additional sidewalk work. So it's, it's the compass of the fence, the enclosure, the approach, and everything. So we did not change that any from what we had submitted previously. So if we didn't change it, then why are we adding it on? He means from, from project to project. Okay. This project's been on hold for a while just because of the P2G. We were ready to go. Well, actually, it was awarded at one time, but because of the P2G, we put a hold on it until we determined what all changes were going to go through the school district as far as what schools were going to get repurposed. And so now that we know where everything's at, we'll put it back out again for bid. It's been too long since the last time it was awarded to award to the general contractor that won it, so we're putting back in again. The only thing we've really changed on it this time is added some acoustics. We've had to this design to try to keep the acoustical design down a little bit. Right, which is based on experience from other, other gyms. Right. Are there other questions? Thank you. Uh, we have number, is number, this has been related to number four, recommending approval of the final plan and specs for the I-89-2007 school bond issue project S-7011B, gymnasium at Wilson Elementary School. I'd recognize the motion for approval. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Been moved and seconded. We'll vote. Approved. Next. Next item is the consent docket. There's numbers A through G. Are there any questions relating to the consent docket? If not, I would recognize a motion to approve them all at the same time. It's been moved. Is there a second? We've been seconded. Are there any questions or comments? 
Seeing none, we'll vote on the consent docket. Approved. Next item is a ratification docket. We have two items, K and L, where we have some speakers today, but I'd like to go ahead and vote on the other ones at this time. And uh, I would recognize a motion that we approve all of the ratification docket number uh, letters except for K and L. It's been moved and is there a second? Moved and seconded? Was someone second? second. You had, we had two guys say moved at the same time. Okay, moved and seconded. Any questions or comments? We'll vote. Approved. Now, with regard to K and L, um, we do have speaker, Mr. Charles Henry, who is here to speak. Good afternoon. Do I have a time limit? Okay, because I signed up for public comments, so I just wanted to make sure. But I thank you, and I appreciate you for allowing me to speak. I'm Charles Henry. I'm Oklahoma City School Board Member of District 1. I just wanted to go over a few things with you. I'm sure you've probably heard about the, the issues going on with uh, Northeast High School and class in SAS and a merger. And so it was brought to my attention about what this uh, honorable board does. And so I wanted to let you know that we do have litigation against um, certain members of the school board and the superintendent and the general counsel. And um, the case got moved to federal court, and we voluntarily dismissed it without prejudice. And so there's been movement around as far as saying that we've dropped the lawsuit and the lawsuit is dropped. And so I just wanted to put you all on notice that uh, we voluntarily dismissed to go back in the state court, and we will be going back to state court very, very, I can't tell you the date, but very, very soon. So I would ask this honorable um, board to put this on pause and do I do appreciate uh, you identifying K and L. There was also C and V, but those items are dealing with roofs. When we start dealing with names and logos and things like that, I appreciate you, Chairman, for uh, identifying uh, items K through L. So the school's name is Northeast Academy legally. Uh, we have a board policy, and according to our Constitution, our state statutes, and our case law, we cannot change, a board has to comply with its board policy. And so that is what the issue is. And there's people that think as a board that that policy was just some uh, laissez-faire policy that they didn't have to comply with. That's not according to the laws of the great state of Oklahoma. And so one example is I just discovered when I asked questions about expenditures. So you have the maps for kids, and then that passed. And then in 2016, you had a bond election. That bond election with Oklahoma City taxpayers was primarily for maintenance purposes. Now, there are some caveats dealing with fundraisers for funding art programs, and there may be another section as well for athletics and things of that nature. But the voters of this great city voted for that to make sure that if there are any air conditioning units or whatever happens, that that brick and mortar and those things that are attached to that, that we have proper monies to maintain those repairs. Uh, there was an expenditure that I did not vote for that stated that this school board, that this, this advisory board uh, may have ratified or, or, or may not have, but we purchased $126,000 for some Steinway pianos at Northeast Academy. Now that school has not had a functioning lab prior to 10 years to this. We have schools that need all kind of repairs with toilets and things of that nature. And we've probably seen in the last few weeks um, anywhere from $150,000 to $300,000 worth of money being expended into that school. I know that some of that money may come from outside entities, but a lot of that money did come from this 2016 election. So those are some of the issues that we're dealing with, and some of that stuff can delve into our litigation so I would ask uh, um, this honorable board to not do that. And I also want to state that um, if we can, if I and some public citizens, if we can have a workshop to kind of understand how this advisory board works. My question is, has there ever, anything ever been rejected by this board ever since the board started as far as expenditures? Is there any investigations to go out to make sure that the taxpayer's money is being expended properly? Um, we want to make sure that this is fair, and I want to make sure that, that the money is accounted for is fair, but I know that the money is going in to the merged school because it is a merger. It's a merged school, and it's going into that, and they just basically went from one side of town with a school that was predominantly white and came into uh, one of the most successful high schools 
in Oklahoma City until it was defunded. This, these, these issues we're talking about now are not related to this ratification. So it, 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 if I could just, yes, that. yes, sir. And so my relation to saying that is that this is of utmost importance because basically what they're doing is eradicating everything by using the bond election money to change the gym floor from northeast and the Viking symbol and completely change it with the money that you've expended to be able to put class and SAS on everything. And I'm just saying that is totally unfair. And I'm just asking this board to respectfully and honorably just put this on hold until the issue is finally resolved. Because what's going to happen is if we expend all this money and the courts rule in our favor, then all this money will have to be spent again to change everything back to where it was. For some people, they don't think that that's going to happen. But th there's one thing from the court of public opinion, and there's another thing in the court of law. And the court of law goes according to the law, not according to the court of public opinion. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'm willing to answer. So Mr. Henry, may yes, sir. Uh, so make sure I understand your objection is the fact that uh, you just don't want the names on there. I mean, <clears throat> correct? I'm sorry, I could barely hear you. What was your, I just want to make sure I understand what you're, what you're asking us to do. You're asking, you don't want the names, any money being spent to change names. Well, they're using the money to put class in School of Advanced Studies. On everything, <laughs> right? I think that that is fundamentally unfair. And okay. so, if there's issues as far as repairs for the safety of kids and things of that nature, I have no problem with that. Roof repairs, uh, we have no problem with that per se. Gotcha. But, but the problem that we have is that they they're using this money to because to change uniforms. Uh, I voted against. Uh, we had uh, some bond election money for the purchase of uniforms. Those uniforms state class in School of Advanced Studies. It doesn't say class in School of Advanced Studies at Northeast. And Northeast is nowhere included in the name. It just says class in School of Advanced Studies. So do you have an issue with, let's say, a, a softball field is being built out there currently? And uh, they have a scoreboard, but it doesn't say anything other than it's just a scoreboard. <clears throat> and you can always add the signage later. You, that's just a... That's just a uh, you go get a printed sign and slap up whatever you want on a name. So you can put the scoreboard up, but you don't leave, well, they, leave the naming off it for now. If they, if, they, if they leave the name off of now, I think that's excellent. And, and if I misspoke and they're, they're not intending to put the name on there, that, that's great. Yeah, but, it's going be on the gym. I mean, you could build the gym floor and just leave the name off for now and wait till everything gets sorted out and then put the name on later. But, I mean, I'm just, I'm just making sure that was your issue. That's an excellent point. From my understanding is that the, the gym floor... The, the main gym floor has already been changed to, the, the colors have been changed to blue and gold instead of maroon and, you know, the, the original yeah. colors. And there's no compromise yet, so it can't be like a compromise of maroon yeah, and gold. Color. So no, we're dealing with all that. Let's just make sure I understood what you're, yeah. Well, so, so from my understanding, the gym is, is currently says class and SAS comments and it's blue and gold. If, it, if the gym still is uh, maroon and gray and still has a Viking logo, then I have been spoken. But from my understanding, the gym has already been changed. I did see an expenditure on here to modify that. And so, like I said, I'm here new. I just got this information. But if those monies are being used in part for the purpose of facilitating uh, changing the name of the school or changing the mascot and the logo, I would ask you to put it on pause. And it's very honorable in what you're doing. I've talked to you privately. Very honorable what you're doing. And so I have no issue with putting in fields, but the problem is uh, we were very excited for these fields to come, and then now that they come, now everything is wiped away because there's an opportunity to have a new field and all that. And that's getting outside of the issue. But to answer your question, if that scoreboard doesn't say any school name, then that's fine. But if that school, if the intent is for the school district to put signage on there that says class and school of advanced studies at this particular time i think it's best not to put anything like that on there i think as far as a field in the middle of the field if you have some logos some emblem some symbol mascot i don't think it should just say class and sas you know at this particular time so we're not trying to stop any kids from playing uh you know softball football basketball but until this issue is resolved in the courts i think it, it be, would be advisable to um because we're dealing with taxpayer money to not move forward and put any use any of these monies to change any of the names on any of the school on that particular uh, school. Okay, I just want to make sure I understood. So, how far along are we on the basketball project there? On the have we started it all or I don't? If there's yeah. some people here that can answer, Mr. Todd, look, I, I want to address a couple things first. <clears throat> as far as this board approving or not approving something. 
my office does not bring something to this board that isn't proper to be approved. However, this board has asked questions and delved deep into subjects and, and had us bring some things back, but we're not going to bring something that isn't appropriate and isn't approved to this, this board because that's not really their job, that's my job. Um, second of all, we don't, we work with the school district as far as just making sure that the, the purchases are, are proper. We don't ask why they're buying 50 saxophones or 100 laptops. We, we just make sure how they're being purchased and how they're being done. So that's, that's our function. And, and I, then I wanted to address also what you're just asking about is that this is the ratification docket, docket and we've set up a system where anything less than $50,000 my office is able to approve uh, upon investigation and seeing that it's proper. And, and so I have to defer to Gary Jewell here to tell me how far along this has gone because we have approved this and it's on here for ratification. So I don't know how far it's gone. Gary, do you want to address that? On these items here, all of these items that are on ratification, we've already went through the approval process and they've all been POs issued for these. Now, we'll also state the fact on item L, that has nothing to do with any names. All that was was to make the floor outside of the court area of the small gym, that location, elevated up to for ADA purposes on that there. Now, I don't know on item K what logo they did or did not put on the scoreboard. That was actually through athletics, so I can't speak for them on that part. But on all these, as Mr. Todd related to, is we go through and make sure that through the procedures of how we purchase is how we do this. And again, anything under $50,000 we run it through, we meet all of our purchasing guidelines, everybody through operations reviews it and sees it, sent over to the MAPS office to review it, go through that approval process back to us and issue a PO. And then at that time it comes in for y'all's Right, and that was done just so that it's easier, it doesn't cost, everybody here knows that it doesn't cost six weeks to do $2,500 sewer repair. L is definitely done. It is completed. K, I do believe, is ordered. I know a PO is in place for it. I don't know if it's here and installed yet. Again, it's Everything on the ratification docket has either been completed and or purchased with the PO in place. And that's the way the process has been set up, as Mr. Todd alluded to, the fact that we came back in, I think it was March and February, March of this year, to make it to where we could move forward these processes under $50,000 and not have to wait and have them come in front of you guys for every little small thing. Yes, that already been expended. Yes. Do we know if the scoreboard has a logo on it or any kind of class in SAS information? I, I on do it? not. And I guess here's my whole thing about it. We, the school district, got together with the MAPS office, and I do believe this board came together with a resolution this last year, this year, earlier this year, to be able to have a way to 
move forward on purchases, purchases of less than $50,000. And so we are abiding by that resolution and we do those steps every day on this to move it forward. And so again, Mr. White, on as far as the process, we're doing a process that we all agreed to and came to no, I understand part of process, so. and that's why I was asking, there's nothing that this board could do today to stop that. It's already been done. That's what, I, that's what you said. Right. That, David, that's right. Okay. I'm just voting because I'm just that way. Okay. Yes, sir, and part of that is because they've been working so hard on the pathway to greatness right before school started that everything's been coming I through. I understand all that. Yep. I understand all that. This has the, the It's a board members, thing. The board member's concern is the name of the school, and because I think he's right about that, I want to vote no. But I'm not asking anybody else to vote with me unless you want to I've, really end I've up got a qu another question. Um, this is a ratification not a purchase right and unfortunately we have been this board committee has been in trying to be thrown into the middle of another struggle is there any legal within you anything legally with the title of class and SAS high school the way that it's written on our agenda legally with with you mr. Todd and this this committee that's formed now. If we vote yes or vote no, either way, is there a legality that can come back to this committee? Um, that would be Mr. So if you look at the items K and L, both of them provide for uh, improvements at uh, class in SAS. And neither one of them provides for a designation of title. Let's not have this board affirming or denying or taking any position as to the title of the schools or the names of the schools. That is not a position. The role of this board is to oversee the expenditure of funds to make sure that the appropriate processes for expenditures were followed and for, for competitively bidding those items that require competitive bidding, uh, not to make policy decisions as to school names. So therefore, I'd like to, to end mine with saying, Mr. Henry, thanks for, for coming up to bringing your concerns here. but. My understanding is that that is not our fight. It's it's you all's struggle, but we're going to give the money to you to do, to ratify whatever monies that you guys have already said yes to. Does that make sense? For me? Is that a motion? Uh, he's got a question. Oh. Sorry. Thank you all for your wisdom and input. Appreciate you, sir. And um, um, my question is the. You're saying the monies will be given to the school district, and so the determination of what name is going to be left up to that, but you all aren't ratifying it in the name of class and SAS, because like you said, on the agenda, it says class and SAS. So any, any so I guess when you vote, I'm, I'm assuming that you all, if you do vote in support of whatever the ratification is, that you're supporting that the monies be expended, but you're not necessarily voting to say that the monies are expended solely for the purpose of this name or this mascot or this logo to be just class in School of Advanced Studies. And so that's, so that's, and then the last thing I'd just like to say is any future, if any issues come up in the future, I would respectfully ask this on board to be mindful of that. And also I just want to say I want to thank you uh, for your time. And if there's any way that you all can have a workshop where I and other public citizens can be educated, we would definitely appreciate it because there's tens of thousands of people that I'm standing right here for. I'm not standing by myself. There are a whole bunch of people that are standing with me regarding this situation that has happened. And so I thank you and I appreciate you all for your time. I, I almost forgot to add that we did receive other emails. We have seven emails that are essentially the same thing what Mr. Henry just said. I approve this as stated. Okay. K and L. We'll vote. Oh, I need a second. It's been moved and seconded. Approved. <clears throat> Are there any comments by board, staff, and citizens other than those we've already had? Seeing none, we're adjourned. <clears throat>